Amen. So, yes, we know that uh, Sister Nicholson, I still need to get the answer more clarified for the unsaved reason. We know what it is. We want to go to heaven. We have accepted Jesus. We know the price to pay for consecration. We know the price to pay for holiness. We want the ungodly man to know. Because everybody you meet and you say, are you saved? They tell you yes. But when you look at the fruits, you are saying, it's impossible. How could this man be saved in the condition that he is in? He isn't paying anything. You want to share with that tonight? Yes. Uh, we don't want to suffer. None of us wants to suffer. That's why we don't want to go to hell. We want to be comfortable. We want to go to heaven. But the, in order to be a Christian, we have to give up the flesh. The fleshly part that uh, and we are to submit daily first of all we have to have faith in god we have to and in jesus christ and his death and resurrection then the holy spirit come in our lives but then again we have to sacrifice our flesh put it on the subjection but the sin is fun as some people say sin is sweet and we don't want to give up the the fun part of sin because you know sin some you know certain things that we do i do this to make me feel better i want to do this because this is what makes me feel good but sometimes the things that make us feel good is the very things that's going to bring us to hell so we have to give that up in order to be um for the holy spirit to cleanse us to and for us not to grieve the holy spirit and so that we could listen to him, that he can lead us to the right direction towards kingdom life. Okay, so we, we go into the scripture and it says, that the uh, evangelist read here, it says, If your hand cause you to stumble, if it cause you to stumble, because the reason why a lot of people are in that condition is because things are causing them to stumble. And it, it says, if your hand causes you to stumble, get rid of it. In other words, get rid of it because you cannot go to my heaven. If you, you, you could go to my heaven with one hand, but you cannot go in the flesh. So it's a difference there. So when we look at what's happening, Evangelist, what you what you sharing there with us now? No, I was no, actually I was just um looking looking um. In the in the, the the scripture and says if the hand offend thee, so in other words, like it's not that you would not be offended, but when you're offended, what do you do with your offense? Do you retaliate with your offense, or because he said if you open, cut it off? There are some things we have to, as um Sister Nicholson was saying, there are some things we have to cut off if we are going to escape. I should call it escape hellfire. Okay, it, it is said here, and, and I'm reading from the Amplified, um, because we might at sometimes think, well, we're talking about literally cut off. We, 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 we have that thing in us. But I like how the Amplifier put it here. It says, if your hand causes you to stumble and sin, cut it off, that is remove yourself from the source mm -hmm. that, that is exactly yeah. what it's saying so we have to let people know this what we when we look at it cut it off now we have to think about the goodness of god so what god is what the word of god is telling us here is to remove and Reverend, a lot of us, a lot of people that we ministered to do not want to remove from this the situation. We do not want to remove from the bar. 
we do not want to remove from the prostituting we do not want to remove from the drug and it's offending us so in that condition we cannot make heaven Amen. cannot make heaven because the bible clearly states no homongers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no adulterers no lying no stealing and so forth because when you accept Christ when one accepts Christ as their personal savior the Bible tells us they are a new creature when the new creature cannot do the old things and and therefore the word of God Bishop people are not taking the word of God seriously if you if you leave Brooklyn and want to go to certain parts of the Bronx and the GPS tells you you put in the address that you're going to in the GPS and you start on your journey man will follow what the GPS <laughs> says to them and when a mistake is made the GPS tells us reroute, reroute go to yeah. the next place and if you don't follow the GPS you will never get to your destination because we don't know the way Christ came and he gave us the words whereby we can reach to our destination mm. because this is not a home we mm -hmm. are sojourners we are travelers mm -hmm. we're going through this world but we have a place to go to and the word tells us how to live because we cannot say that we don't know because Christ lived on, on the earth. He lived on the earth and he did not sin. We, we, we are talking about hell that we men do not want to pay to go to heaven to get out. Hear what the word says. It is better for you to enter life crippled. In other words, enter heaven crippled than to have two hands and go into hell. So, you, 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 you look at the beautiful people that are involved in, 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 in all type of things that you can think on the face of the earth. Destroying our young people pornography destroying our young people and you you don't find if, if I should use this word you don't find any and anybody getting into this you a, a, a man I'm not good looking enough to get into that the beauty mm -hmm. is what they destroying the world with so they're thinking well look I am not prepared to go to hell I don't want to go to hell but you are not paying the price in other words you said I'm living it up life becomes so important for us that we live it up but lower down we will we will see some depth into the the the, the concern about the rich man and Lazarus we're gonna see some depth there mm -hmm. and how because people don't want to believe the Bible but what happened is I have to be we have to believe, believe the Bible the we got God. to believe in the world Amen. we believe in every other thing uh -huh. Any, anybody come your baby boy wrote write a book you believe in that mm -hmm. your daughter write oh you believe in that but coming to believe in the blueprint the Bible the Word of God the the the, the, the master plan for our life Amen. we don't want to believe in that evangelist one thing that we have to realize that um hell is a place where everybody is headed if you don't receive jesus christ as your personal lord and savior jesus said except you repent uh -huh. you shall all likewise perish the lord jesus has a lot to say about this horrible place called hell what he has to say about hell needs to be heard by the whole world. Jesus wants us to know that hell is real. If I just stop, let, let, hold on, it's real. But who, it's real, but who was it prepared for? We're going to get there. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. We have, you know, we have that information. <coughs> hell is terrible beyond description. And that no one has to go there. Let's see what Jesus say about hell and how to avoid going there. Hell is real. In some societies, in they did a recent 
poll here in America some time ago and it was recorded that 60 percent of Americans believe in hell 25 percent don't believe there is no place called hell because a hell, holy God as you said before will not make his world and then send people to hell and all them stuff so 25 percent of those polled did not believe that six percent didn't know what to believe and nine percent just did not have no word so we have this privilege to let them know hell is real whether we believe it we don't believe it we preach it we don't preach it the bible speak about hell more than it speaks about heaven it tells us about in matthew chapter 13 and verse 30 tell us about the wheat and the tears what will happen to the wheat we could if, let us just turn our our scripture there and we'll see what the bible has to say because that's i realize that the best way to go is to let the, the listeners know so they could go back and read this word for themselves to recognize we're not making this up you know we're not speaking because we have lips to speak we are speaking to you the word of god matthew 13 and verse 30 and it says let both grow together until the harvest and in the time of harvest i will say to the reapers gather ye together first the tears and bind them in bundles to be burnt them but gather the wheat into my barn so we see right then and there the tears is not talking about tears and wheat he's talking about people you know when the bible the bible remember the the the, the gospels is written metaphorically and when you talk about you don't literally mean they're going to just burn some bush the tears will be the people mm -hmm. that reject god so if you're out there and you're not saved tonight is your night to receive not to be a tear but you can be wheat tonight in the presence of god if you're now joining us we are in the the book of mac and we are talking to you we are in the book of mac 9 30 uh, 34 and 43 we are talking to you about hell you said were you getting off what are you talking about hell hell is it's not a place to talk about it's like a dirty word well it it could be dirty it's really dirty that's it why dirty. we are trying that's why we are trying to tell you that you don't have to go there so you're listening to the hour of prayer coming to you live from faith life ministry faith life ministry is a family church located at 844 Claxton Avenue in Brooklyn listen we want you to pay attention we are taking our time just to get across to you tonight we don't have balloons and and other things given away tonight what we have is the Word of God as the Word of God tell us thy word have I hid in my heart if you ex if you accept the word and you put it in your heart tonight you will get to know that Jesus loves you he died for your sins he came into this world and he is the one that took upon us our curse and died he carried them died and left it right there escape him tonight escape hell tonight it's a place of torment uh rev hell mm -hmm. hell is real amen mm -hmm. hell is real and the guideline is there because if you do what the word of god said to do he tells you you will he will welcome you in heaven and if you don't do it you'll go to hell hell is a place of damnation the bible tells us there will be fire mm -hmm. do we read tonight that the worms in heaven will never die in hell, hell never in die. hell will never die it stays there t because to it is it, it was it was designed for mm. torment mm -hmm. to 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 make you feel miserable the fire will never be quenched hell is real my brothers and my sisters 
You see, in the world today, there's a saying, if, if you feel good doing it, just do it. But that feeling will last just for a while, and it will go away. And what you're working for is complete damnation in hell. Mm. In heaven, there is joy forevermore. When you do read about what will happen, what takes place in heaven, and what takes place in hell, there is, we have a choice today to follow Jesus, follow the word of God, do what is good in the sight of God. Of course we will be persecuted. Of course we will have a hard time. Christians will, 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 will be faced with trials and tribulation. But it is better. You go through the tribulations today and tomorrow and be in heaven with Jesus mm. than to go in hell and have damnation forever. Amen. As just, I, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. ahead. Just before um, Sister Nicholas, now you speak, Bishop, I just want us to know Psalm 9 and verse 17 says, Nine, Psalm 9 and verse 17 and it reads thus the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nation that forget God so we know who is going to hell the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God there is a place for you and also to Luke 12 and verse 5 says but i will forewarn you whom he shall fear fear him which after had killed had power to cast into hell yea i say unto you fear him yeah well sister nicole i want to read a uh, second Thessalonians one seven mm -hmm. to ten And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angel. 8, verse 8. In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and, and that obey not the gospel. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of God and from the glory of his power? So what we're saying is that when God comes, uh, first of all, hell is a eternal separation mm -hmm. from God. I mean, it's a separation from God. That means that there is no time you won't. Once you get into hell, there is not going to be another chance mm -hmm. that you can that God's salvation can come to you. There are some people, some religion. The Catholic believe in purgatory, that after you die, that you may get a a second chance, and you can able to. Uh, it's a part of purging, and you can able to get to uh, you can go to heaven, but there are no scriptures in this Bible that can support that, <laughs> because hell was not created for human. God did not create hell for the human being us men god love us too much to bring us there it was created for the devil and the demons satan and his demons however god that's why he sent us out he is so much want everybody to hear the gospel and have the chance to hear the gospel he say he summons us he command us as christians this is how serious it is do not for us not to keep the gospel for ourselves, but go and preach the gospel to for all the four corners of the earth, even to the places, to the most remote places that we can go to. Make sure that we are able to go there. That's why I give God thanks for today that we have internet, yes, we have yes, everything, yes, television. Yes, <laughs> that we can. Although sometimes they the do word. the first sin. 
it may be used for sin, but we can use it for godliness to send it forward, to yes. send it yes. to the word that yes. people can hear the gospel. Because God is waiting patiently. He that's why we believe we realize that God has not come yet because there are some who still the gospel need to be going into areas that maybe are no electricity and people are bill- going there mm-hmm. to make sure mm-hmm. that they develop it up so that no one not on this excuse. earth will have any excuse that I have not been told. Mm-hmm. So, because hell is not made for human, it's made for the devil. And that's why God said, Jesus said to us, if anything right now, is offending us that we cannot if you are if you like to steal and you can't help yourself you're a kleptomania <laughs> you understand it's better and this is something it might be symbolic in a way but it means it could mean the truth too cut off your hand it is that serious because this hand this body is not going to be forever but f- it's better to go to have to live on this earth with one hand then going into a hell, a place of eternal, I mean forever, torment. Imagine in the summertime when you do not have any air conditioner, a fan, or maybe not enough water or anything to drink, and you're feeling miserable. Mm. And that feels, just imagine that time, you're feeling miserable, there, there, you can't get cool. No matter what you do, there's nothing can cool you. Imagine when hell is like a thousand times more than that. Mm. And there will never, you can't get any water. You can't, whatever you do, it cannot you know, make you cool. And the fire is so hot, it's so hot. It's like you are consumed all over with this blazing fire and forever. And you will never die. You will always feel in this eternal, this heat all around you. No, this is not a place for anybody to want to spend the rest of their life. So if that's why Jesus is saying, and it sounds so gross, cut it off. Because, you know, it's better off living without something to make you sin than going to hell. Because hell is no place for you, for me. For anyone. Yeah, go ahead. Um, we were talking, uh, Sister Nicholson brought it up, but we were talking about hell have some residents. And, <laughs> 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 and Jesus tell us plainly why hell was created. Hell was designed for a, a place of punishment for Satan and his demonic forces for the false prophet and the Antichrist. So, none of us should not fit in that category. Matthew 25 and verse 41 tells us, Then shall they say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, cursed ye into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Not for you, for the devil and his angels. Revelation 20 and verse 10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So, one thing you cannot do in hell, you cannot die. I I was listening. I, I, I listened to um, Sister Nicholson just when she made two statements that I, I have to say that I don't like too much of religious religion. I, it's, it's, I am a Christian and because what is happening, you know, we, we got to break this down, Rev, that people realize we go to the cemetery and we bury a dead and on the bank we are seen born from another person that was buried there i know where i'm coming here mm-hmm. we seen bones from Can another tell, person I, re- I remember parts. going to grenada to bury my nephew and 
they wanted to bury him in the same hole where his grandfather was buried and when the the grave men go when we look they say boy here is bone from your father and i said that's okay just put it back and cover it up now what is happening we people we do not want to tell people that we live here because religion religion is telling people that you live here and it's how you live here that you will go to either hell or heaven in other words you living with a sumptuous life money to spend everything man you in heaven but if you're poor and don't have if you're poor and don't have then you in hell and and religion come by and tell us no god is too loving oh gentle jesus meek and my he's so blessed he would not send you to hell but the bible say the soul that sinned shall surely die right. so when we look at the thing we got to t let people know when you gone down in that grave whether they burn you whether they buried you your soul comes out and it's gone waiting somewhere else and Amen. people got to get to know that because we see when we dead we finish and that's the problem that we have in this world today when you dead you finish i remember looking at the situation my my uncle died and i went into the we went into the mortuary and there the the casket was over eleven thousand dollars and um he was there and when they opened it i called my brother and i'm not ashamed to say this on the air i called my brother they said look look at uncle he is there no wood no stone no land no money mm. he going to be soon into ashes mm. but where is the soul why did the bible talk about the soul so we have to let people know when you dead you are not finished no, you're not. and and religion is telling us that so i i want people to know you are listening to the hour of prayer if you're now joining us we are talking about hell you might like it but you don't want to go there but if you don't accept jesus as your personal savior brother sister that's exactly where you're heading for but you don't have to go there you can come make a turn right now the prodigal son was heading for hell but he came to himself oh my god and he realized i don't want to go there i'm going back to my father and that's a type of christ like way you don't have to go and die in your sin you can and come back to Jesus maybe you are backslidden maybe you have turned your back on God and doing some of the worst but you can walk back because God even promised to marry to merge you to get you as a backslider and make somebody new of from you so why don't you come tonight and accept him as your personal savior listen when you dead you're not finished don't let nobody oh, fool you that body we made up of body, soul, oh, and spirit. spirit. Amen. And the, every one of them is Hallelujah. seen with different things. Amen. Body, Amen. soul, and spirit. Yes. Your body is what going in that grave. Yes. Your body is yes. what turning into ashes. But Amen. that soul yes. Amen. is Amen. going Amen. somewhere else. Amen. Not Amen. purgatory. Don't worry with that. It's nowhere in the Bible as Sister Nicholson tell you. It's not there. It's either hell or heaven. Amen. For it is appointed unto man mm -hmm. once to die. And after death is judgment. Ecclesiastes, sorry. Ecclesiastes 12 tell us, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, now the years not dry, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in him. I know he's talking as um, Bishop was talking about this body. You know, if we would turn to it, we will see what happened. Let us just look at Ecclesiastes 12 quickly before I speak. And we will see what happened to this body that we talk about and we, we cherish and we do all manner of things with that is failing us even as we speak. Because we're living in a day now when you sleep in the night when you wake up, every part of your body is in pain. That's to tell mm. you the body is going back from whence Amen. it came. Ecclesiastes 12 and 1 says, Remember now thy creator in the day of thy youth 
while the evil day come not nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say i have no pleasure in them while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened nor the clouds return after the rain in the days when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few remember that's your teeth and those that look out of the window be darkened your eyes and the door shall be shut in the street when the sound of the grinding is low and he shall rise up at the voice of the birds and all the daughters of music shall be brought low also when they shall be afraid of that which is high and fear shall be in the way and the almond tree shall flourish and the grasshopper shall be a burden and desire shall fail because man goeth to his long home and the mourners go about the streets or the silver cord be loose or the golden bowl be broken or the pitcher be broken at the fountain and the wheel broken at the cistern then shall the dust return to the earth as it were and the spirit shall go the spirit shall return unto god who gave it vanity of vanity said the preacher all of this is just vanity so tonight you have an opportunity to make god the director the savior of your life else as we said the body is going back from whence it came from dust comet it shall return to the dust amen now man is made man was made with a tripod a tripod man yes the spirit the flesh and the soul the the spirit gets direction from God mm -hmm. if we follow the word of Christ our spirit man will be strong and it will strengthen our soul and get us ready for heaven but if we go after the lust of the flesh the things that the flesh cry out for brothers and sisters is just sin and sin and wickedness so if we go and satisfy or or, or, or take a diet on things that this flesh crave for look out you're gonna burst hell wide open guaranteed ticket guaranteed ticket for hell so the, the bible tells us in in galatian 5 16 i say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh because in every one of us there is a war going on the flesh wants to do what it want to do and the spirit is trying to hold us back and say listen it makes no sense we doing this we make no sense we doing that but we have a choice which way we want to go the world tells us if you enjoy it go for it but brothers and sisters the devil is a liar christ came and he gave us the word whereby we can live for him because it is no longer ourselves and our flesh because after that new birth we should live to kill the flesh crucify the flesh and live for Christ or go ahead satisfy the lust of the flesh and go to hell it's clear cut it's not, you cannot do both because the man that lives after the flesh is an enemy of God yes he is warring with God. If you don't do what God say to do, you are an enemy of God. So we have a choice. You follow the word of God or you go after the lust of the flesh. It's up to you. That, that, that's why I, you know, I believe that every home should have a Bible. And when you 
get into problem because if you have a Bible in your home and somebody come and tell you something foolishly like there is no hell subconsciously you know there is a hell but you're going to want to accept what they say because you don't want to go they say you're going to join with them but we're talking about the spirit the soul and the body so you have to get to bible read the word of god that's the beauty of it is to have it not on your shelf and take down at a certain time and dust when you want to uh, make somebody believe that you read the Bible. Everybody wants a good television in their home. They want a good player. They want everything, but they do not want to have the Word of God where they can go because that is life. And you are talking about God, the Savior, who came to prevent you from getting into hell. You are listening to the hour of prayer. Call us right now for help. The number you should reach us on is 347-663-8638. Don't forget that number. It can bring you life. It can get you out of hell just by getting some help. 347-663-8638. Let the Lord have its way. Evangelist. Praise God. Um, this is one point or topic that a lot of people may not want to hear or they may not agree with it but one of the things we have to realize that a lot of religious preachers will be responsible for a lot of the souls that is going to hell and the reason why that is so is because a lot of religious leaders refuse to talk about it because as we said before the congregation will feel bad or whatever the case is because if you talk about hell and you speak about hell the way you are to speak about it you will not be most like because we are living in a day when everybody talking about prosperity not about you see, one of the things we have to realize, a lot of religious leaders, they are preparing the people for capture, not rapture. <laughs> so, based upon that, they will be, when this people is being captured, they will be responsible. If religious preachers preach hell in the pulpit, there will be less hell on the street. So, religious leaders have a responsibility to put down the pocketbook, the prosperity gospel, and let the people know the consequences, as the scripture says, except you repent. There is a hell, and you're going to spend your eternity somewhere. There is a place for each and every one of us to spend our, your, our eternity if you're serving God in spirit and in truth, you know where you're going. And if you if you are a religious person, a moral person, a decent person, whether you're a friend, family, whoever you are, if you did not accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, hell shall be your portion. Yes, is in the I was uh, uh, continuing for where Neg um, Reverend uh, Nicholson was speaking about when he's speaking about flesh. And as we know that f the flesh they're talking about is not our physical flesh per se that's on our body. Be be you know, this is the flesh that um, the Bible is talking about is our inward desires. And it's my it's our thought, like uh, it says in Galatians five, starting from the nineteen verse. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these: adultery, fornication, mm -hmm. uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variant, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, 
envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in a time past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you do not inherit the kingdom of God, you know that the next place hell. is hell. So when we're talking about the things of the flesh, is not to say that we must actually hate the body that we live in, but it's the things of this world, the false religions, the the, the things that are not of God, like hatred, arguing, quarreling with other people, l l l moving from one m f uh, mate. You, you know, uh, this, some men like to have a lot of female relationship and some women, the same thing, like to have different relationship instead of marrying and having one partner only. And... You know, it's stealing and drunkenness and drugs and smoking marijuana and all these things. That's these mind altering type of drugs and so forth. And even religions that will meditation in yoga. All these things are the work of the flesh. And, 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 and when we get involved into that, we have to come back to the, to the, to the ministers that we... We preach a washed down gospel sometimes because of we want the crowd to stay. Yes. We we don't come out mm. and and let people know that it is appointed come and say, man. unto man wants to die. Mm. We we preach the word and we look for favor that well if if I preach hell. I, I, I remember in, 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 in my younger days I was in church in Trinidad and um, there was a, a deacon. Uh, he was up in age and the service was going on and he sat down on the corner of the church and the minister was preaching and expounding on hell. And when he when he pressed the word, the deacon get up with excitement, wanting to know where is the fire, where is the fire, because he got scared, and a lot of people are getting scared. So the, the ministers play upon that. If I preach too much about condemnation, if I preach too much about sin, if I preach too much about hell, I would not have the crowd and Popularity. the favorite of the crowd. Mm -hmm. we, we wouldn't be as popular, popular. because mm -hmm. of the word. I remember looking to God and began growing up as a young preacher. And I, I corner myself one and I say, God, if you bless me to preach your word, if I have to minister for five minutes, God help me not to compromise. Because it brings something, a conviction, when we minister the word and we, we compromise with the things that are in the church. I, I've grown up like going to church as a preacher and asking God, lay the burden of the congregation upon me. Because I want them to hear. That's why. I minister and I demonstrate uh, uh, because with minister that I have to say when you preach the word that anointing is on your life make an altar call because you don't know who is in church we see everybody in church and everybody looking good everybody dressed but we are looking as evangelist said the prosperity I'm too rich to go to hell I'm too poor to go to heaven but listen, you cannot pay your way into hell. You cannot pay your way into heaven. It's either or. The Bible say, I repeat, the soul that sinneth shall die. And it is appointed unto man once to die. And after that comes the judgment. You're listening to the Hour of Prayer tonight. Coming to you from Faith Life Ministry. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. Why don't you call us? And let us know that you need help. You need help. God can bless you tonight. Stay tuned and let God have its way in your life.
that hallelujah he reigns and if he didn't reign we can't go to heaven Amen. if he didn't reign we can't see heaven so you have an opportunity tonight to shout like that songwriter says hallelujah he reigns God is alive that's the beauty of it God is alive he's not in the tomb he's not there he came forth and because he came forth, you and I tonight have life. And you and I tonight can accept him and acknowledge the fact that he said, I want you to worship me, but you must, you must worship me in spirit and in truth. Call us for help tonight and let us tell you how you can get to understand and accept the fact that he reigned. Just as you don't believe in hell and heaven, you don't believe in God. If you believe in God, you're going to believe in what he says. Because you've got to follow him in spirit and in truth. So let's go back to the program right now. It's going good. And I know that we are disturbing you tonight. Because I'm glad that I'm able to disturb you. I'm still your Pastor Vincent. I'm glad that I can disturb you and tell you there is a hell to shun. Coming up in the season. A lot of you are going to go reveling in, 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 in drunkenness, looking for favor and trying to make yourself a good appetizer. But you don't have to do that. All you have to do is to know he reigns. Evangelist. <laughs> glory to God. Glory to God. Um, John 8 and 24 tells us, I said therefore unto you that he shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sin. You have an opportunity this night to believe that God is who God says he is. The Bible says, let God be true and let every man be a liar. So tonight, you know, we were talking also back on the, the religious preachers. And that's why we got to call them religious preachers because that's, that's who they are. That is not telling you the truth about hell they everybody telling you making things beautiful for you the false prophets that's what they do they are 
Satan spawn anybody any preacher whoever they may be that is not telling you the undiluted word of God is a false preacher a false prophet whether you be want to hear it or not that is what the word declared him to be because of the fact do not listen to somebody that just telling you what they what you want to hear what you need to hear is the word of of God because the word of God is what going to save you the word of God is what going to keep you from hell fire yes yes pastor praise God praise God praise God the word of God David said your word will I hide in my heart mm -hmm. Lord so I will not sin against you one of the things that's happening in the in the Christian world today, people go to church every Sunday. They come out. They go to to midweek service, but no change in their lives, mm -hmm. no accountability. Mm -hmm. When pe some people leave the church, they become strangers. They go home, they put the Bible down, and they live their life according to the flesh what they desire what they want to do anything they want to do they do any place they want to go they go but in Christendom it is not so you cannot go and fulfill the lust of the flesh and expect to be friend with God and and one of the sad things sometimes church some people in the church run into some luck or something something good happened to them and you know they equate that to god oh and people think they're living a holy life that's why this good thing happened to them but the lord the word of god says that he reign on the just and the unjust the gift you get from a neighbor or somebody give you a gift does not mean to say you're living a holy life the money you save in the bank does not mean to say you're living a holy life. Because sometimes the money people have, they use that as their God. Hmm. They will not help nobody. Mm -hmm. the, Bishop, you mentioned that, 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 that rich man. He wear fine linen, fine clothes, et scrumptiously, et, et, the best. Mm. But some thing was happening in his life also mm -hmm. he was seen a beggar every day mm -hmm. dog was licking his sores the, the sword of the beggar and when this thing's happening your whole life your physical life is be, has been threatened by it because what the what was dog eating and and you know I'm from Grenada and, and I have seen dog eat the worst kind of stuff mm -hmm. the waste from human dead meat anything anything, <laughs> anything. and 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 dog was li licking the wounds the sores of that man the dogs had more compassion I'm telling you and the man that had the money did not even say hey let me help you. Let me take you out of the misery you're in now. Because brothers and sisters, sometimes you're in Christ and you're not doing too good. And other people with money and doing better than you, you know, because of their money, they say, hey, the question, where is your God? Look, you say you love Jesus. Look at the state he have you in. I heard the other day, or not I heard, I did read the papers that Rihanna said if you ask Jesus for something, he did not give you. Ask Satan. <laughs> mm -hmm. Satanic worship. Ask Satan. And I said, wow. With her background in Barbados, I guess the family trembled when they heard that. <laughs> ask Satan. Because people think wherever you can get it, get it. But temptation will come to the believers. Come to them to try them. Because brothers and sisters, don't think the Christian walk is without trial. 
and tribulation. It will come. But the word of God said, you will go to the fire, you will mm. not get burned. You will go to the water and it will not overwhelm you. Yeah. All you have to do is to hold on to God on changing hands. There we see the man, the ending. The man was in a place of comfort. And the one with the money was in the place of torment. We we we're going to go we going to go to that scripture now um, and, and, and and holding back and and as you touch on it, Reverend, we're going to go and, and that is tonight if you have your Bibles, I, I hope you do. We are going into the book of Luke. Luke and um we want you to go into Luke is that Luke sixteen mm -hmm. And um, we want to go into the 19th verse. And we want to show you something as Rev touched on it. And we were speaking to you about hell. We're going to show you. Uh, and Listen, you have to read the place to believe in the Bible. Don't You don't have to take all what we're telling you. When we finish here, go into your, the Bible and see whether we are speaking the truth or not. So we're going to go into the Word of God again. And we're going into Luke, um, Evangelist, you want to read uh, about four verses that we can play with? Luke 16, from verses 19 on. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared sumptuously every day and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and licked his sores and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom and the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that uh, he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and Lazarus, and likewise Lazarus' evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. Hmm. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they hmm. will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophet, neither will they be persuaded through one rose from the dead. If you notice <laughs> the reading, it is so packed yes. that we have to tell people the only how you will accept and believe is if you read the Bible. You got to believe in the word of God because this man, this man look at his condition and they say, the Bible say he, he wear expensive purple. You know where purple came from? Purple, it is manufactured is a dye mm -hmm. coming out from the sea. In other words, it's it, it's made from a shell, mm -hmm. but it's a dye made from a shell, and it's begun. It's it's very expensive, costly, 
And if you could look at, at the, the world today, you will see exactly what we are telling you. This young lady named that Reverend now called, she has money. And she don't care about life. And she can go and people are worshipping Satan. A lot of rich people are Satan worshippers. This man, the Bible say, was rich. He wear purple. Come from snail. The, the dye mm -hmm. that come from snail. You, you, you can imagine that you walk, uh, if you have a fur coat, they, they, they look at you as wealthy. And they, 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 they look at you and people almost want to take it away from you. Mm -hmm. But this man, and the Bible say that this poor man was there and the dogs... The dogs, the, the Bible said, the Amplified said that the dogs eat anything. That's true. They eat anything, dead animals. They live off of that. And, and, and a lot of people in today lifestyle that we are living in, a lot of people worship the dogs and the cats. And they feel that is their pride. And if, 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 if they go, to hell or to heaven the dog and the cat have to go with them else they're going to be uncomfortable you wouldn't feel that comfort you would not feel that comfort of the animal whether you go to hell or whether you go to heaven but one thing I do know you're going to be comforted if you go to heaven but if you go to hell you will never be comforted you hear what it says he said please send somebody mm -hmm to dip the finger in water just to quench my thirst. Listen, people, God is real. God is real. Heaven is real. And you must repent of your sin, evangelist. If you look at that rich man, chances are that this man passed, and maybe every time he passed, maybe he would tell his God, get that dirty man from his gate mm. because that man if you if you have a vagrant sleeping on your in your doorstep in your in your hallway that is not something what you're going to want lazarus was like that that vagrant every time that man passed he would see lazarus there and chance that maybe he would not want that man but we as we said before we realize that the dogs had more compassion than that rich man but there was a day coming when the same vagrant Lazarus, he was begging that Abraham could just send Lazarus just to dip it. Never mind the sores. Never mind nothing like that. Just dip the, the, the tip of his finger in water. How much water could your finger hold hmm. that will be able to quench thirst? That's to tell you how terrible that place we're talking about is hell if you're out there and you're listening hell is not no joke hell is not a place where you visit and you come back hell have a duration whether we believe it or not hell have a duration and hell duration dur duration is eternal revelation 14 10 and 11 says the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of the torment ascended up forever and ever, and they shall have no rest day or night. No everything you're doing if you're not feeling well today chances are you're going to feel better tomorrow in hell there is only one feeling torment just imagine tom you've been tormented 24 hours a day seven days a week you know the, jesus used some very graphic words 
to describe the awful place places like where the fire is not quenched a place of torment a place with worms you know where the worm died not a place with unsatisfied thirst a place of intensity that is how jesus described hell so the 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 the, 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 the rich man he cried out in hell he was in the he, 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 in the pit of hell he mm. cried out in hell you understand to send Lazarus, and they say something because there is a fixed gulf there is a, always a fixed gulf you understand choose ye this day whom you will serve if god be god for god's sake serve him for your sake serve him the arms of god is open ready to receive he said behold i stand at the door and i'm knocking any man it doesn't matter who you are it does not matter your race your color your creed it does not matter your status in society it does not matter if you're ignorant or you're educated anyone open up your heart unto him he god hallelujah will come in and sup with you and you will sup with him and you shall have rest today is your day but evangelist how can this be when i went to my father's grave i saw his bone and you telling me that if he was a christian that bone is there but he is in will be in heaven but uh, we remember we said before i think rev said it before that you understand and as 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 ecclesiastes says the dust return to earth as it were this you see we cherish this flesh that giving us all that issues that problem that flesh that refused to be satisfied that flesh that loves sin this is earthy it's sensual and it's devilish and anything that is earthy will remain on earth but you see he says in, in, in Ecclesiastes he said but the spirit returned to God mm. who gave it glory so you see there Hallelujah. is a difference there is a difference your spirit is going to go back mm. to God yeah. if Amen. you live a spirit filled life you know where your spirit your spirit you will be comforted in abraham's bosom and if you live a wretched life you have a guaranteed ticket the unrepented hallelujah the unrepented heart have a guaranteed place in the lake of fire do not let that be your portion this night so in other words no flesh no flesh no flesh hallelujah shall enter heaven Amen. no flesh you're going to be back in the spirit know the word the soul that sin it shall die so if you live right that soul will live on because in hell is a type of death never stop being tormented mm. never cease heat so you don't have to worry yourself all you have to do is to make a turn around like the prodigal son you're listening to us tonight give us a call take up your phone it's open we will stop the program just to talk with you pray with you and i know that god will have his way right now we're going to pray we want to pray because i feel in my spirit that you are listening and maybe you're getting worried you're getting scared oh they know about hell like that well you don't have to go there because neither of us want to preach to you and then end up in hell reverend could you pray for the people on the outside their soul that are listening scared and God wants to reach out tonight. So just hold on to your cell phone. Hold, rest your hand on your radio. Do something tonight. And let this man of God pray for you right now. After he finished praying for you. And you got touched. Something happened. Take the phone and call us. 347-663-8638. Rev. Heavenly Father, we thank you dear God. For giving us the opportunity, Father. To speak your word tonight. And Father, we thank you, O God, that you have put attentive ears, my God, to listen to your word. Mm. 
and the hearts, O oh God, the hearts that you have touched, Father. We pray that you continue to touch them tonight, O oh God. But most of all, dear God, we pray, Lord, that you give them the power to make a decision tonight yes, Lord. to receive your son Jesus. Your word declare for those who have received him, he have made them sons of God. Let them know tonight, my God, fear is not of you, O oh God. Mm. Because you have not given a spirit of fear, but you've given a spirit of power, love, and a song mind. Touch them tonight, O oh God. Father, your word said the prodigal son came to his senses. Bring them to their senses tonight, O oh yes, God. Lord. And let them know whatever condition they're in tonight, you have something better for them, dear God, Jesus. And Lord, as I pray tonight, O oh God, I pray, Father, that their heart will be touched so that they can accept your son Jesus to be sons of the living God. And I say to you tonight, listeners, if you can repeat that prayer with me, mm. hallelujah, Jesus. God will make a way for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I have a I, uh, I ask for forgiveness of sins tonight. I ask for forgiveness, forgiveness of sin tonight. The sins that I made against you, Lord. The, the sin that, that I made, made against you, Lord. I ask for forgiveness. I ask for forgiveness. And I accept your son, Jesus Christ. And I accept your son, Jesus Christ. To be Lord and Savior in my life. To be Lord and Savior in my life. And that power... And that power that that raised Christ from the dead that raised Christ from the dead will enter into me will enter into me and make me a son of God and make me a son of God. Your word declare. Your word declare. If I believe in my heart, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. I'll be saved. I'll be saved. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. For saving me. For saving me. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I pray, dear God. I pray, dear God. That your Holy Spirit. That your Holy Spirit. Will come into my heart. Will come into my heart. And lead me. And lead me. So I'll be with you. So I'll be with you. In the place that you've gone to prepare for me. In the place that you've gone to prepare for me. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. If you said this prayer, you listen to this prayer, then we want you to call us and let us know. We want to help you. 347 663 8638. That's 347. 663-8638. As I was looking in the Amplified, and a footnote, it says that the dog licking the souls on that man was so unclean. Information was so unclean. And the thing about it is that this, they were saying here the dogs shed and garbage and uncleanness. Okay. Yes, God bless you on the air with Faith Life Ministry. Yes, good evening. Yes. I just wanted to say I uh I just finished listening to uh the sermon on speaking about health. Yes. And I just wanted to say thank you so much because I'm still waiting for my church to speak on it. And as you said, a lot of pastors are, for some reason, leaving that part out and giving us the sugar and the, the sweetness and mm -hmm. the prosperity and all that. And I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate it. I became saved this year, April. And I was reading the Bible, starting all over again, the Bible from Genesis, and reading, and I finished Genesis, and I read, read, started reading Exodus, and someone said, I heard a pastor said something about Revelation, how he enjoys reading ex Revelation, and I said, let me read Revelation, and I have to tell you, it was like sitting down in the 
scariest movie theater ever. But mm. it was good for me. Yes. Amen. It was really good for me because it woke me up. I was very, when reading it, I was anxious. I was afraid for myself, my family. And, and I knew that I had to do something about myself. I knew that I had to talk to my family. Because if I didn't do something, if I did not do something, my soul would definitely, definitely not be in the place that I wanted mm -hmm. to be in. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say I thank you for tonight. God bless you. We, you so we we want to pray for your strength in the Lord and that your pastor will see what you see in the the, the Bible as far as the, 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 the hell situation. Yes, as pastors, I know that a lot of us only go on the prosperity and we look at the crowd. But when you read the book of Revelation, what my advice to you uh, um, is you should read Revelation and what's that other book? Daniel. Daniel. Read, bo go back and read the book of Daniel and it will help you very much. But you just hold on god will bless you there and and thank god for your conversion as a as a early christian god has something in store for you father in the name of jesus i present this lady to you tonight oh god stretch your hands and open up her eyes more open up her heart and help a pastor to see God and understand the value of the word. Take control in the name of the Father. Bless her. Bless her home. Increase her knowledge. Give her an anointing that breaks yoke. Take control, O oh God. Make a way for her as she continue lifting up the name of Christ. God bless you there. We need more people like you. We need more people to understand like you do because the word of God is from Genesis to Revelation. That's all that he gave to us. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Amen. Amen. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes. That's a smart woman, Bishop. Yes. Because yes. the Word of God says, the fear of God is yes. the beginning of wisdom. Yes. May God forever bless her. Yeah, when, when, when people yeah. in the church, I realize that I, I, I always say, we don't know who is in the congregation. Mm -hmm. We don't know. When I saw a lady came in and she said, she looking for rescue because she came from the weakness and she realized that it wasn't working for her it wasn't working for her and she want something more i thank god for that lady she's smart because of the more of god and it's there for us looking at what happened with the sores of that sick man dogs it's 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 a point of contact where you and i don't have to reach that situation Amen. we you and i don't have to get into hell and see what's going on i remember uh i was you know a story was told that a young man a, a, a man wanted to see the president and Every time he reached to the gate, the soldiers will turn him back. The security guards will say, no, sir, no, sir, you can't see the president. You've got to have an appointment. Hear what it says. The Bible says, appointed unto man wants to die. And every time he go, they will turn him back. He said, I have to see the president. They say, where is the appointment? One day, the president's son was kicking ball near to the security gate. And the young man stepped up. He ran to him. So who are you looking for? He says, son, I want to see your father. I want to see the president. He's put the security aside. And he said, follow me. That's like Jesus. He's the only way that you can amen, go to. Amen. You don't have to go to religion. They're going to fail you. We fail amen. miserable. The church fail miserable. But you can go to Jesus. Amen. Just as I am, said the songwriter. Just as I am without one plea. 
for that thy blood was shed the blood was shed for your sins and for my sins and you think you're in a bad situation you 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 have people worse than you why don't you turn to Jesus right now take up your phone and call for help 347 663 8638 it's open and we will stop just to talk with you you know as the Fogan caller was speaking I was just reflecting and something that came to me you will be very conscious in here <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, you know, when I mean somebody die, you know, they gone to sleep. You could you could beat them or whatever you do. They don't feel anything. But in hell, you will be awake. God is going to prepare you a body. The same spirit that you're serving the devil we will get back into you. So you're going to feel everything. You're going to recognize the people that you pass by and you did not say hello to mm -hmm. the people that you did not help with your unrepented self you will be very conscious this man i mean a perfect example this sumptuously handsome rich man mm -hmm. that were wearing purple and his lowest days when he passed lazarus lazarus to him was an eyesore but when he get in the situation he was conscious enough to call out to father abraham he knew mm -hmm. who father abraham was to call out to father abraham and he was conscious enough to see where lazarus was that he said send lazarus to dip so you will be very conscious in hell you ain't gonna lose a beat all you're going to feel the pain that awaits you in hell you don't de need it. You don't deserve it if you turn your life to God. Yes, Sister Nicholson, I see you you're looking and so you have something to say. Go ahead. Yes, I was just um, reading the Bible also about this rich man. The rich man. And um, he saw Lazarus, this poor beggar. The, and Lazarus, not the Lazarus that Jesus rose from the, uh, the dead. That, uh, this is another Lazarus. And he looked up on Lazarus, I mean, passed him. But, you know, in those days, some people believed that if you were rich, it's a blessing from God. And maybe today <coughs> the same thing some people <laughs> believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and if you were poor, it was a curse from God. So this rich man is believing that he was so blessed to wear and eat and and live in the finest home he can possibly get and this beggar he, some, he must have had some kind of sin that's why he mm -hmm. is the way mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. however the, uh, the bible it, it flipped whatever happened now you could see the flip side of mm -hmm. jesus is mm -hmm. saying no it is not so do not believe in such for a statement but he was I'm going back to uh, going to first John uh, chapter 3 17 it said but whosoever has this world's good and mm. seat his brother have need and shut up his bowel mm. of compassion from him how dwelleth the love of God in him how that's the question is the love of God in him so that means this man see God is looking for us to show compassion to the poor, to the, those who are needy, you know, it, like in Matthew, I um, don't remember which uh, verse, is it Matthew 23, um, 41, but it said that when I was hungry, you mm -hmm. did not feed me. Mm -hmm. When I was thirsty, you, you did not no give drink. me drink. drink. When mm -hmm. I needed clothes, you did, did not clothe me. Clothe me. Mm. And when I was a stranger, you did not take me in. My God. And if you refuse the least of these, is you refuse Jesus Christ also. So, you know, this man re really thought he was living the life and living well. But he was just on his way to hell. Because the love of God was not in him. Because the words say, love thy neighbor as you love yourself. 
and you and I, I hope not to take it up I could see now look at the flip side of it when they both died now Lazarus who was suffering and been licked uh, just wanted to just to have just a crumb mm. from that man's table just a crumb mm, of food just a crumb and this rich man maybe had the best of everything the best to eat and the dogs licking at his um sores the dogs licking at Lazarus sore now this man is in Hades as they would call it in a compartment of torment mm. right now Lazarus when he looked up he's in Abraham bosom being comforted this is for the rest of Lazarus eternal life as we know that hell is you know is forever and now this man is now where the worms Mm. never die although Lazarus may have had some infection and everything in his life this man now is there where the worms is just mm. all mm. over him mm. with fire so you can see the flip side of it so we got to be careful how we live in this world and how we think about the people who need food who need clothing who need you know if we could help them with something if you don't even have money to give you could encourage them to do something but do not look down on people because they do not have or got the chance of education the style of life that you have that's how I mean we're going to close the program now but I tell you this I am announcing this that we're going to continue this on Saturday and then on Tuesday because I, I feel it in my spirit that people are listening and maybe you get don't get scared you know turn to Jesus Amen. he loves you he came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly we want to make some announcements they want to listen very attentively time is getting done and us we're going to announce that tomorrow Wednesday is our Bible class and uh, it starts at 7 30 tomorrow Wednesday then Friday is a deliverance service and then Saturday morning at 6 to eight is prayer meeting you can join us in any of these services and you will be blessed the number you should call to get direction is 718-773-7515 that number again is 718-773-7515 and then you will get to know if you need a prayer meeting in your home call us we set it up and come to your home and Ask God to bless your home. And don't forget, this coming Sunday, amen, come and worship the Lord with us. Come and worship with us. And that service starts at 11 a.m. Come out in a Sunday school, 11, and then we go straight into our service. Looking out for All Year's Night. All Year's Night. We're going to have service start. We're going to be in church Sunday morning. Amen. And then on Sunday night from 10 to 12 midnight. We don't have any Christmas morning service, but we have service the 24th. The 25th is Christmas. The 24th, we're going to have service and we are on to invite you to come out and worship the Lord with us. Remember, if you come to Faith Life to worship, you will go back rejoicing, you will go back singing because of nothing else but the Spirit of God in motion. So may God bless you as you continue lifting up the name of Christ. We want to bring this program to an end and we are so grateful that you sat with us. Listen, so please, be encouraged. Let God have its way as the panel just say goodbye. Hello, Radio Land. Sorry, I got to go. <laughs> See you next time. Stay in the Word. Amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. And I pray that each and every one that heard the Word are blessed. And as it has blessed <coughs> me also. Amen. Grace and Peace Radio Land, I just want you to leave this scripture with you. It's taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3. And 4 says, But if this gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world had blinded the mind of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine in them. Let this light shine in you tonight. Remember, hell is heaven's junkyard. You don't want to go there. God mm -hmm. bless you.
I know you don't want to go. The Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the hours spent in your presence. We thank you for this studio, the management of this studio. We pray that you have your divine way. We lift you up, God. Those that listen tonight, we ask you, God, to take control. Bless them and leave them not alone until they completely surrender and bow to you. God, dismiss us from your this this part, but then bring us to a home safe, bound in your presence and another time back to the studio. God bless you. We're going to be back in the studio on Saturday and then next Tuesday we're going to be back in the studio again. We want to salute all our listeners. We know some of our listeners from Trinidad is in Barbados and we salute today. We salute um, uh, We salute each and every one. Shekinah Sanctuary. We salute Apostle Smith. We salute uh, Pastor Jane Gilbert. We salute all of those that's listening in the island, Grenada, Canada, and wherever you're listening to the hour of prayer coming to you live from Faith Life Ministry. This is true, uh, 92.9 FM. Stay tuned. Let God have its way in your life. Remember, God loves you and Jesus care about you. That's why he came to die for the sins of the world. Please, be encouraged tonight. We are so happy we were able to serve you. We are so happy and we took the topic that I know can be of a blessing to you tonight. Are you inspired? Then you can call us 3718-773-7515 or you can reach us on the cell 347 Eight, six. That's three four seven four 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 six nine eight six. Call us coming. We'll talk with you. If you didn't get an answer, we'll show answer you by calling you back. Leave a number and we know that God will take care of you. This is your host. This is your pastor. This is your friend. Bishop Vincent saying, I love you and there is nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Stay in love, stay tuned, and love Jesus real good. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.